Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and today we're going to talk about a star removal tool and a star mask creation tool called Starnet++ and how to make it much faster if you have an NVIDIA graphics card or an NVIDIA GPU for graphical processing unit. And um, this computer does, even though it's integrated, so hopefully it's going to work. Uh, we'll see if that's really the case, but I have a GeForce uh, GTX 1660 Ti in this uh, laptop. And I've tested already on my desktop computer, which has a 1080 Ti and makes everything so much faster. Now, if you're not familiar with what uh, Starnet++ is, it's basically a, a, a neural network that has been trained via machine learning to remove stars from images. And so it will just like remove stars and it does give you a very convincing result. And you see that often on Facebook po posts or on astrophotography forums where you see a very nice nebula that looks super smooth and there's not a single star in there. That's done via Starnet++. And um, so it's a very impressive piece of software as well because it can create star masks in the same way. And I've noticed that the star masks that it makes are really impressive, uh, even though sometimes they can be a bit too aggressive. And if you have a galaxy, for example, it tends to look at the car core of that galaxy as a star. But, you know, nothing's uh, perfect. Now, this uh, Starnet++, by the way, it works great on images that have already been stretched, meaning the, they have had a histogram transformation applied to them to make everything a bit, uh, uh, a bit brighter, including the stars. Uh, and it takes a long time to process because the default version of Starnet++ runs on the uh, central processing unit, the, unit, the CPU, uh, so the, the normal processor of the computer. And that take, can take several minutes Whereas if it runs on a graphical uh, processor, uh, so graphics card, like I'm trying to do here, it should run much faster. And so let's run through those steps together to make Starnet++ faster and first actually to install it because I haven't installed it on that computer yet. Uh, now for this video, I'm gonna be using the PixInsight module of Starnet++, but you can use the standalone version of Starnet++ with exactly the same method, and it should work exactly, exactly the same. Okay, so looking at my screen, you can see that I have a nice image in PixInsight open, which is what I'm gonna use to uh, remove stars from. And uh, first things first, what I'm gonna use is actually this page there that has been uh, written by Dark Arkin, Arkin, Archin, whatever, uh, by Dark, we like to call him Dark, who's one of the main uh, Nina developers. And um, we're gonna follow the instructions there and we're gonna see together how well this works. Of course, uh, feel free to just go to that webpage. I'm, I'm putting the link in the description down below and follow the instructions on your own because it's very well made and there's tons of screenshots. So really this video is not super useful, <laughs> but if it makes you know people know about the existence of this, of Starnet++ on its own, but also more importantly of this uh, speed up methodology that uh, Dark um, uh, is writing about here, it will make everything, uh, it, it will be worth it. So anyway, you can see that the first steps will be to download some stuff. So first you'll want to download the actual Starnet++ module if you haven't installed it in PixInsight yet and just clicking on the link and you choose the Windows version and that will download the right thing. So that's uh, that's easy. Uh, the next step is to download the NVIDIA CUDA um, which is used for machine learning really and you click on the link you can just say that it's Windows for me it's Windows 10 and I will want to download a local executable and you can see it's a 2.1 gigabyte download. Uh, the next step is actually uh, CUDNN, but that requires registration as an NVIDIA developer, which is not complicated. You have to put your name, your email address, your occupation, so like your company actually, company name, so I put self for self-employed, and then what are you going to use it with? And I said machine learning, and I work in media because I'm a YouTuber. I mean, it's not like I'm you know making a living out of it, but uh, I do make YouTube videos. So I think it was fairly uh, decent of me to, uh, to say that. And then the last one, LibTensorFlow, 
uh, GPU, you can just click on it and it will download the file immediately. So uh, some of those are pretty large, so feel free to go ahead and download them already. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to install Starnet++. So I'm going to go into that uh, zip file here. So I am going to go to my downloads. I'm going to right click on Starnet PI Windows, extract it, and then I am just going to uh, go to it. And here we are, and we're going to read the README because it's a big file that says that I should read it. So let's read it because I'm a good citizen. And it has actually some um, instructions here about what to do. So the first step will be to close PixInsight. <laughs> let's close PixInsight. And then I need to put uh, all of the files from here into the bin folder of PixInsight. Cool. So I'm just going to control C for copy. I'm going to open up a new uh, file explorer using the shortcut Windows key plus E, if that's uh, something that uh, you uh, didn't know, but it's a very uh, convenient shortcut. And we're going to go into uh, PixInsight bin, and I'm just going to paste everything there. And yes, I want to grant permission for all of the items to copy to that folder. Okay, so for the moment, it's not that difficult. So I'm now going to launch PixInsight as is uh, said in those instructions. And we are going to go as per the, the instructions, if I remember correctly, under process uh, modules, was it? And install module. And then I can do search and it will find that new Starnet++ uh, module. I will therefore install it. Okay, do I need to re restart PixInsight? Uh, apparently not. So let's load my image again. That way we can actually uh, use it. Here it is. And we're going to try to launch Starnet++ with the uh, current uh, parameters. Sorry, the, the, the current CPU based processing. And we're going to measure how long it takes to run. So if I run Starnet, you can see that there, is, there are two parameters the stride, which I typically leave at the default, and then whether you want to remove the stars or create a star mask. And I used it a lot actually to create star masks, but here we're just going to remove the stars. And we're going to try to run it, and I'm going to make sure that I run it at 24 and 30 seconds. Okay. And now it should be running. Hopefully it will run uh, successfully. And we have to wait and wait and wait. So I will cut the video and just get back to you once it's done. And it's done. And it took uh, over two minutes, two minutes and three seconds roughly. But I, I kind of like this uh, final image. It looks sweet, right? I mean, it's like it looks kind of otherworldly, which, you know, for uh, an object that's so far away from us and that's spanning like light years and light years and more light years, I think it's fairly appropriate. And I, I kind of like it like that. This is pretty cool. But let's remember, it took two minutes and three seconds, roughly. Cool. So we know that. By the way, if you have trouble and you get an error, uh, you may want to go to the uh, process console there and type here CD space bin and then enter if you're having an error when you run Starnet++. If you don't, no need to do any of that. And here we can see that it did seem to remove those stars uh, pretty decently. So uh, this is working pretty well. But that's not what we're here for. We're, we're here to actually uh, get this to run faster. So I don't want it to take two minutes. I want it to take 30 seconds, right? So uh, let's go into the following details. So we need to install Starnet++. Yes, it's done. We need to install CUDA. Okay, let's install CUDA. I know it's, uh, it will take a bit of time, uh, so uh, I will be cutting again, but basically once you run the executable, if it deigns to run, there it is, it will try to um, unzip itself. And it will take roughly two, three minutes to unzip itself because, you know, we haven't waited enough. Uh, so I will be uh, cutting again, and it's pathetic because we're going to use one single little small tiny part of that installation. So it's a bit depressing that I need to download such a, such a huge package and then take so long to uncompress, to decompress everything and then to install only a tiny little thing uh, for all of that. But it's as they are 
and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as uh, I'm in the installation program. And here we are. So the install is launched. It will take a little bit of time to check the system com compatibility and it's doing that by checking whether you have an NVIDIA GPU that can actually run those like kind of TensorFlow type, type, of, uh, type of stuff. And my card is a GTX card, meaning it doesn't have any um, machine learning related cores, uh, but I would suspect, suspect that RTX cards, cards like the uh, RTX uh, 2080 Ti, which would be top of the line, will actually perform much better than what I have in this laptop. But here we are, uh, we're gonna agree with the NVIDIA software agreement. We're gonna say custom, and we're gonna deselect everything for now. And we're just going to select runtime libraries. That's it. We've downloaded two gigas of data and spent a long time unzipping all of this just for those libraries. Cool. So let's click next and then it's going to install to this particular folder. Remember that folder, we're going to use it in the next step. And we'll wait until it's installed. Uh, since we installed very little bits, it's quite fast and we can close that. And the next step is to install the CUDNN, which is the one where you need to actually register as a developer with NVIDIA. Um, which I did and I downloaded it here and here we are and what the instructions say is that we should put the bin, bin folder to uh, the um, into the uh, folder that we just installed this CUDA thing into so I'm gonna go into program files NVIDIA GPU computing toolkit CUDA version 10 and here we are I'm just going to without even unzipping just drag and drop that bin folder into the uh, CUDA folder and we're going to press continue and here we are it's copying it has finished copying so we're done with uh, that step and I think I, I skipped the step I skipped the most important step which is um, installing so I have actually installed Starnet++ this I skipped uh, replacing tensorflow.dll, uh, which is quite important, uh, but again, it doesn't really matter what order this is. So I'm gonna open this uh, lib tensorflow GPU windows, and under lib, I'm gonna find this tensorflow.dll, and I am going to put it inside uh, uh, C, program files, pixinsight, and bin, and it should replace the file that we've originally put in there when we we installed um, uh, Starnet++ just a few minutes ago. So let's uh, replace the file in the destination, give it permission to do so. And I first need to close PixInsight because the file is currently in use. So let's close it, try again, and now we can. So we're putting that file in. So. Whew, we're getting there slowly but surely. We've put in all of the uh, data in there and now we need to edit some environment variables. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm going to go into uh, the, um, you know, this menu there and we're just gonna search for environment and immediately you can see edit the system environment variables uh, here. So I am going to go in here and we're gonna click on uh, environment variables and you have two choices you can put them in the system variables meaning it will apply to all of the users of the computer or you can put them in the user variables and that's what I'm gonna do so I want to add this thing there so again you really need to go in the description below and uh, and get into that uh, that article to get the proper task text to put in there and we want to set this environment variable to uh, true. And the next one is um, we want to add this path to the path. Uh, because yes, there is a path environment variable in Windows. We're gonna click on it, click on edit, click on new, and I'm gonna copy paste the, uh, the path that we have here. And okay, and I think we should be good. 
Then we're actually going to go into the task manager and this is not compulsory, but I want to make sure that this is all working properly. And under uh, GPU, and I want to select my, my NVIDIA GPU, uh, one of the panels in there, I will go in there and select uh, CUDA, or SUDA, CUDA, whatever. And we're gonna see whether CUDA actually is being used by Starnet++ now. So let's open PixInsight. And I'm going to open again my, uh, my uh, file that I want to uh, remove the stars from. I first need to say OK uh, to this and drag and drop. And here it is. And we are going to use uh, Starnet++. So I'm going to get there. They're the same parameters as we have before. And when I am at 30 seconds past the minute, so in five seconds, I am going to launch it and go and let's see how long it takes i'm just going to put the uh, task manager we'll see whether i've installed it properly if i see this cuda uh, thing go up which hopefully i will yes i do yes nice it means it's using the gpu which is great right now we're at 20 seconds how long will it take huh. the suspense almost at 30 seconds we're okay we're at 32 seconds that's pretty good so we pretty much divided the time to uh, do this Starnet++ plus plus by four uh, which is really really good uh, and so that is a really really neat trick um, I really like being able to do that. I find this awesome and I actually like this final starless image. I had never tried it on this image. So I was doing it for the first time during this video. And this is, yeah, this is neat. And so that is first the beauty of Starnet++. If you didn't know about Starnet++, there is a standalone version if you're not using PixInsight. And then the only thing you need to do is install uh, that um, uh, standalone uh, version and you'll want to replace the tensorflow.dll uh, file just like we did except that it will not be into the into the PixInsight folder it will be into the download folder all of the other steps they're the same and if you want me if you have trouble like feel free to leave a comment down below but like I'm blown away, this is awesome. So Dark and others did a terrific job getting that to work. I hope that sometime, someday they'll be able to put that on for um, AMD GPUs and maybe even Intel uh, integrated graphics because that should work pretty well as well. But we're getting a 400% you know, improvement in processing time. That's pretty decent. <laughs> So anyway, uh, with, the, with this, I think this is uh, what I wanted to talk about today. If you like this and if you're not subscribed to this channel, please go down below and subscribe to the channel because there's tons of good videos uh, coming up. And uh, to give you an example, one of the good videos that I had recently is how I, oh, I obtained this color palette for this particular Seagull Nebula because it's not a common uh, color theme and this is using a very specific and kind of new uh, color combination method for narrowband which I'm linking to the video above. So this is the kind of content that you can expect. It's not all pics and sites. There's equipment reviews, there's technical stuff about like sensors and cameras and read noise and binning and all that kind of stuff. There's all sorts of content on the channel. So uh, if you like this, please, uh, please uh, subscribe, click on the not notification I icon, please feel free to click on the like button, leave a comment down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Whenever you can, don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.